Okay, we have here another integral today. We've got the integral from zero to one, natural log x over x plus one dx. Okay, when I start looking at this, it looks really familiar. Like I can't remember if I've done this before, what methods I did, what methods I didn't do, but I had a certain way in mind for this. I wanted to, I wanted to start with a u substitution, but I'm doing this, but I'm doing this because I eventually want to do a series expansion on just noticing this one plus x here. We can use this to get this in the form of a geometric series. But first with this substitution, let's actually solve for x. And we've got this minus sign, so I could, we can bring it over here like this and write this as minus u ln x. So that when we solve for x, we have x equal to e minus u. Take a derivative, and then for our dx value, we just have minus e minus u du. Okay, let's go and do the substitution on it now. So first we plug one in here, that's just gonna be a zero. We plug a zero in, we get minus infinity, but that's where this minus sign works for us because then we've got infinity for this lower bound. Then ln x is just minus u. X is gonna be this stuff, so we have, I'm gonna change the order, write it like one plus e minus u. Then dx, we're gonna have this minus e minus u du. Let's use this minus sign right here to flip the bounds just so that we can get the infinity up top here. And now we don't have the x anymore, but we can still do geometric series on this. The way it's gonna work, let's look at our geometric series formula. So if we have for one over one minus x, this is gonna be the same thing as the sum from zero to infinity of x to the n when absolute value of x is less than one. So in order to set this up, we get that minus sign there. So let's create this a different way. Let's write this as minus times minus e minus u. And then this is gonna be our input in here. So what we're gonna want is we're gonna say, for this expression here, just plugging this into the same formula, now this becomes n equals zero to infinity, but now we input minus e minus u to the n here. So for our convergence on it, we need absolute value e minus u to be less than one. Minus sign doesn't matter inside the absolute value. The reason this is gonna work is you just look at our balance, everything's positive going to infinity. When it's going to infinity, it's going to zero. Technically it's zero, it's one, but we don't really care about at zero. So this is gonna work. All these values are gonna be less than one. So let's take what we found here. We can plug this back into our integral. Just kind of consider like there's a one right here. So that we have exactly this expression on the left. So let's rewrite it. I'm gonna kind of reorder things a little on the fly. So for this, I wanna put the minus sign with this e to the minus u, so we'll have it as u minus e minus u here. Then we'll plug in this series, but let's write it a little bit differently, because what I wanna do is, I'm gonna break out this minus sign separately, so I can write, with exponent properties, I can write this as minus one to the n, e minus u to the n. And next, let's distribute everything inside the sum and rewrite it, so we're gonna have the same base here, and actually, I don't know why I put that there. The minus one, I can combine that with this one. So let's see what happens when we rewrite. We'll have the u in front here, like this minus one times this is gonna be minus one to the n plus one. And then e to the minus u times e to the minus u n, I can write that as e minus u n plus one over here. But then let's do a quick index change on it. I can subtract one here and I just need to add one here. And now at this point, what I wanna do is I wanna integrate this thing. So what I need to do is swap the order of the sum and integration. I'm justified in doing it just because we already established our absolute convergence right here. So we'll do the swap on this one. But then this thing right here is looking pretty familiar. I've got two good ways to do it. You could do this with gamma function, but you would need to do a substitution because on gamma function, you just want e to the minus u or you can do Laplace transform. I'm gonna choose the Laplace transform here just because it's perfectly set up. Let me just reorder this to make it clear. So now at this point, the only thing maybe unfamiliar is usually like in a Laplace transform like this variable is S, but here it's N, that's not gonna matter. So what we have here is actually just the Laplace transform of U. So let's see our formula for something in this form. If we have the Laplace transform of T to the N, the formula for that is just gonna be gamma of N plus one over s to the n plus one. And then in the case like we have here, where n is an integer value, we could also use it this way and have it as just n factorial over s, s to the n plus one. So I think we'll go ahead and use this second formula. Sorry, I know the variables are confusing because everything switched the way we usually have it, but variable names don't actually matter. So let's just go ahead and see what happens. We'll have this minus one to the n out front. Then here, 
So first, the exponent, the exponent on this, this is just a one. So this corresponds with the n value here. So what we're gonna have is gonna be just one factorial over the s, which is actually n, see, confusing, but we have an n here, and then n plus one, that's just gonna be one plus one or two. And I do have another mistake. N should be, the lower bound here should be one, so we need a one everywhere here. But one factorial is just one. Let me kind of clean this up just to see what we have. But then here what we notice is this is really similar to the Riemann zeta function at two, which would be pi squared over six. But the trouble is we have the alternating sign in the numerator, but actually this is more like the eta function, but not quite because for that, the way that would actually work would be one over one squared minus one over two squared plus one over three squared. Notice we've got the sign wrong because the first term is gonna have a minus sign on it. Well, in order to fix that, let's just multiply by a minus one out front. And then doing that, let's multiply a minus inside as well. So we're not changing it. So what we can do here is actually write this as minus the eta function at two, but this has a known value. This is actually pi squared over 12. So for my final solution to this, we just get minus pi squared over 12. Now looking at this more closely, I'm thinking maybe what I did was I probably did the same problem with x minus one or one minus x. And I think if you do that, then you get pi squared over six, I wanna say, but I'm not quite sure. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.